We are joined today by Josh and Sam from Architects. So one more time, let's give them another. Thank you. What makes what makes Architects Architects? You know, when you delve into so many different genres, what's that sort of key essence, or is there one? Does it just keep changing? I think the main thing with it is I think we all have to be really stoked on it. I think there's always been that filter of like, even if we're changing and we're changing sounds, whatever the the end result is, it has to be like everybody has to be stoked on it or. And I think really we do, especially like recently and, and, and for those of which we just kind of sat down and really sort of discussed where we want to take things and what we want to do. And, and sometimes like even, you know, Josh or Dan will bring ideas, you know, pretty fully there to the table. And then you, you, if everyone's like, this is fucking sick, then we, then we just go with it. But I think it's so, I think because we've been about for so long, it, you can't just keep doing the same thing because it's just so... It would be boring to play and it would be you would just sort of stagnate and be well it'd just be boring wouldn't it? no one wants to hear the same record over and over again i always think those albums are there they're always going to be there each each record is its own thing and people can dip in and go out whenever they want so i just think you've got to got to mix it up do you see guys carrying on sort of down that route then in terms of future albums that are coming out can we expect to sort of uh, you know, any sort of extreme changes, do you think, from you guys think in terms a, of genre? Or? Quite a bit of a change from yeah. the last one to the previous. So sure, it probably yeah. wouldn't be quite as big a, a shift. But to me, well, I'd say, Sam wouldn't say this, but one of the main things is the sound voice is very distinctive. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and like from my experience talking to Tom about the writing, I think there's always been a very like high level of attention to detail to the songwriting, like every little mm-hmm. element. I think that's always been, and that's not necessarily a stylistic thing, but I think just the, the drive to try and get everything as perfect as it can be has always been there. That so just kind of ties everything. It has always been there. It's yeah. absolutely fucking exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gabriel Rice wanted to know, um, how does your uh, writing process start? What, what used to happen was, with Holy Hell, when I first started writing, these guys would... I do what I used to do, which would be like sort of agonise over the parts and spend a long time with the song. And then Dan quite rightly, you know, like, like, let's lose that bit, let's chop this down, lose that section, and just only have that around once. And I'd have been so attached to it, I was like, oh, it's really hard to get used to like this new version of the song. Whereas now, I, it sounds lazy, I don't spend as much time on the song. I'll just like do something really quickly give it to him straight away and like sometimes it's like yeah that's great and sometimes it, it will change it and I'm like cool yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, open to and used to that uh, collaboration which I hadn't really had before um, yeah either that or like Dan will just write something from scratches and as well like Dead Butterflies for example was yes. pretty much fully formed sometimes I'll have like all the elements that make up a song like a, a main riff a chorus a middle eight Sometimes I might have those ideas, but Dan just use like the riffs, like let's say Black Lungs. That's like a 50 50 song, like the riffing stuff's me, but then he wrote the chorus. Right. Okay. And he does obviously, it works with Sam, Dan do all the vocal stuff together. Sure. So yeah, it, it depends on the song. That sort of helps as well once you start putting vocals on things, you sort of get a gauge of like, okay, this bit needs to be done more, or this feel, or this would feel better like this. Yeah. And then that happens a lot yeah. more now. Like from from the initial inception of a song, it'll be how quick can we get vocals on it to see about that stuff before we live with it too long. Yeah, have to worry about changing stuff later on. Yeah. So it uh, process is very quick. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I've always wondered with the vocals: is it um, is there a, a main writer for the lyrics? lyrics or is yeah. you, do you take that yourself, or is that? Is that yeah, sort of no, I did. I just did all the lyrics from when I first joined the band to Daybreaker. And Tom wrote the lyrics on Daybreaker uh, and then Lost Forever and then Dan started doing the vocals after Tom passed away because obviously it was so close to him what he was writing about and then yeah from then we've had we've had like odd bits and pieces here and there where I've chucked stuff in but Dan's such a great, great lyricist that I'm not yeah. I'm not too like bothered about trying to put my stuff in there um, I more enjoy the the creative process of like how we can get the vocals sounding 
the layers, all the little details that no one ever notices other than me on Mix 58. As <laughs> <laughs> um, I was say, does it, are you someone that sort of uh, spends a lot of time with vocals? I mean, when it comes to the recording process? I'm not too precious, but I know if it's not good enough. Right. So I think that is like years of experience of just being like, oh, okay, that doesn't thrill me. So, are you as quick now as you were before in terms of recording, or is it gone the other way? Or faster in the sense of like demoing, living with the demos, and yeah. then going and smashing them. Yeah, sure. Because then I've lived with them for longer. Um, but in terms of like actually getting to what the song needs or where my vocals should be, it still takes a while. Yeah, for sure. But well, you just got to sometimes. But sometimes it can be instant. Sometimes you can be like, "Yep, yeah, that's it. That's you know, you've shot gold." Yeah. And you get that feeling, but then sometimes you just don't. You have to keep searching for it. One thing I wanted to uh, ask you about is that it seems like lyrically and with your artwork, you've never shied away from sort of uh, your political um, sort of messages in, in songs. Um, I was wondering if that's something that you've, as a band, if you sort of deliberately made that choice to sort of focus on some of those political views, or if it's something that you just find yourself uh, all naturally writing about because of, you know, the world we live in. Yeah, I think, I think we've always been sort of on that page. I think, uh, especially when Josh joined, and when Josh started filling in, actually, like around Lost Forever, when it was like... Daybreak. Yeah, Daybreak career was when we really started talking about that stuff and sort of finding our feet with it. And I think it's easy to be like, oh, you're like a political band or you talk about politics. And, but I think really, if you're not like writing about like fucking wizards or girls or love or whatever, I think everything can be brought to that and how you feel about certain situations. Um, so I think it's really just sort of being natural about what what stuff means to us. Yeah, I think especially on For Those Who Wish To Exist, I think looking at what's going on in the world rather than sort of pointing a finger at people and saying like, why the fuck aren't people doing this? Rather than it being like, well, we're all at, at fault for everything that's going on right now. Sort of opening up that conversation rather than blaming people, I think was, was important. But I think, yeah, I don't, it doesn't really feel like we're, I think because we're in it, it doesn't feel like we're like that outspoken. Sure. Um, I think I can be a complete gobshite online about a lot of things I care about, mainly animals, um, which some people get annoyed with, but uh, I don't really care. It just means I can sleep at night knowing that I've tried to do something, so. Yeah, so Izzy Atkin um, has asked a question. I, this could be um, perhaps touching on a similar topic. Um, how well does the current state of the industry deal or react to mental health, especially on the level that you guys are at? I don't think there's much around us in support. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of bands and a lot of people taking it on themselves to discuss it. Um, I think conversations within your band members is, is very important. I think uh, we're all very open about if anyone is having a tough time or, or if anyone needs help. But I think actually as an industry, I don't think there's enough there. I don't think there can ever be enough there because when you are struggling with that stuff, you do feel super alone and it can be super, super challenging. So I think it does fall on people to discuss it like, like we do and we're very open about it. Um, but yeah, I do think there could be more. I do think there could yeah. be more. Yeah, self judging. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously it's, as an industry, it's not really like governed by anything. Like you just, everyone's sort of like freelance on their own so yeah. if you've got a problem uh, so then most people in bands you know it's hard to make uh, a living from playing music so to be able to afford to go private if you do need to see someone or talk to someone's uh not always an option for people like there's big waiting lines for the nhs to speak to people so it's yes yeah, it's, it's tough mm. so yes yeah, not but, I, but yeah like sam says sam talks about it a lot I just talk about as much as you can, it's probably the best thing.